My name's Lauren McNee. I'm an audiologist and trainer with Audica. I've been working in the industry now for over 15 years and five of those I've been working here doing training and support for our audiological team as well as our front desk staff to ensure that our clients have the best care uh, that is industry leading and best practice. There's hesitancy around uh, people having a hearing test, I think because audiology is a, a smaller and younger profession. A lot of medical uh, providers don't always think about audiology in the first instance. So for example, uh, we might have cases where somebody's been diagnosed with diabetes. It'd be really wonderful if we could have hearing tests done for those clients. So as a GP or a specialist, when you're considering, you know, a battery of tests and checks for people post diagnosis of those things, or if they're even having under having trouble understanding um, what you're saying to them throughout those appointments, a lot of the time, the signs can be subtle. So it might just be a tilt of the head or a heart or those type of things. So when you start seeing those things or they're not following the prescription guidelines that you've given to them, it's a really great indicator that it might be time to refer them for a hearing check to their local hearing provider. Um, it can have a significant impact on other medical treatments if the client's not truly understanding everything that's been said to them because they have a hearing loss. In the cases of a sudden hearing loss, it can be quite serious if it's not treated quickly. Uh, all of the treatment options we have available for sudden hearing loss are very time sensitive. So if you do come across an individual who is reporting a sudden change in their hearing, it's really imperative that they get that check done as quickly as is possible. In an environment like aged care, it's very valuable for the nurses that are visiting and spending time with those particular residents or individuals to be aware of not only a possible hearing loss, but the fact that perhaps their hearing aids are not optimally functioning. Uh, hearing aids have to live in a very difficult environment with wax and moisture. So as a, an aged care nurse, it's really important to have a hearing assessed for someone who might be showing signs of a hearing loss. So getting a local provider in perhaps, or a lot of people offer home calls uh, where somebody is unable to get to an audiology practice. But once they have gone on to that hearing journey and they are aided, making sure that just because they have their hearing aids in, if they're again showing signs, they're not hearing you or understanding by asking for repeats or again, dominating the conversation can be a really uh, clear indicator that they don't want to misunderstand. So they'll just keep talking uh, because that gives them the control. Uh, in an environment like a pharmacy, we also have an opportunity where you're seeing clients you know, repeatedly for a script, you're having that conversation to explain how they should be utilising that medication. And it's really critical that they understand exactly what you're saying. So when somebody has a hearing loss, they're using a lot of their mental capacity to actually process what they're hearing. And as a result, some of the remembering or understanding can be compromised. So as a pharmacist or somebody working in that environment, ensuring that they are understanding by maybe asking some questions or getting them to repeat back to you can be really beneficial. And if you think there's something happening there, getting them to have a hearing screening to make sure that they are able to truly understand what's happening. The impact of environmental noise or uh, noise induced hearing loss, I think we see two different categories. There's those that relate to recreational noise. So uh, the earbuds, things around the house, mowing the lawn, people doing home renovations, we see some level of that. And I think the true sign of or uh, implication of those earbuds presenting sound so close to the ear will only really start to become evident in years to come. What we're seeing a lot at the moment is people with that noise exposure due to commercial, so their job, whether it be mining or construction, there's a huge range of areas that we see people having a hearing loss and often it impacts people who are younger. A lot of the time hearing loss is seen as an old person condition, but we see people with noise induced hearing loss coming in in their 30s. So as somebody working in that space, they can be impacted quite young, especially with loud impact noises or continuous exposure to noise where they're not potentially wearing the uh, corrective equipment that they're provided. So. For those type of clients, it's again very important to get on top of that, get a test, uh, and then we can educate them around their PPE and around what will happen if it continues to deteriorate.
When we see someone with a hearing loss, we know that there can be related conditions such as uh, isolation. When somebody's unable to communicate with those around them, they really do socially withdraw and that can have those mental and um, socio-emotional impacts. We also see a correlation with falls, um, people's safety when it comes to hearing loss. There are many documented uh, medical correlations in that field um, that link hearing loss to other conditions.